This is our new podcast concept. It's just cat purring, interspersed with music. Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Listen In, a music sharing podcast. I'm Kay. I'm Alexis. I'm Jesse, and I'm definitely not a robot. And we'll be your hosts for today, sharing some of our favorite tracks that you probably haven't heard before. Today, we have a special theme. It's our first theme episode. And today's theme is covers or remixes. Right. So this is actually, I would say, an interesting one in that the combination is a pretty well-known song with a kind of well-known artist. Today, we're going to be listening to Leanne Le Havis. She is a British singer-songwriter. She's born in London and is of Greek and Jamaican descent. She got her start as a musician by being a touring backup vocalist from the years 2008 to 2012. And then in 2012, she releases her debut album and has since released three albums, her sophomore in 2015 and her latest in 2020. Her sound is a blend of soul, folk, R&B, jazz, and neo-soul. Uh, which to me feels like a mix of Lauren Hill, Corinne Bailey Ray, and a bit of Amy Winehouse. The song, we are talking about covers today, and this cover is very significant to Leanne because she said that she structured her latest album to follow the arc of a rocky relationship that she was recently in, showing the phases of love, growth, falling out, rebuilding, and strengthening that she personally went through along the way, and have those events play out and unfold on the album in chronological order. And this cover, she feels that it really encapsulates the turning point midway through that journey, the moment of building up after reaching like her own rock bottom and the breaking down of that relationship, that this song bridges the different places between the beginning and ending phases of that personal arc. And she goes on to say that this song conveys so well what she wanted to say, so she kept it. The song that we're going to be listening to is Radiohead's uh, Weird Fishes, Leanne Lahavis's version of it. This song is not an easy song to cover because of its meandering and unanchored song structure, even more so when reinterpreting it in Leanne's style and sound palette, which is dramatically different from the original. In a cheeky way, I would say the song starts off with a very precise rendition of the opening drum groove from the original, but then it suddenly gives us a curveball by shifting the song into a halftime feel. Uh, and then what follows from there is all new and really wonderful territory. Uh, Let's have a listen and see where Leanne takes us from this journey. Thank you. 
and a weird fish picked over by the worms and weird fish Wow. I feel like I'm obsessed with this artist already, and I've only heard one song from them. I have to go listen to everything they've done. Um, like I, I already feel like this is going to be one of my favorite artists, and this is it. I, I feel like I'm obligated to go listen to the Radiohead version, but it's... I'd be perfectly happy having this be the only version I hear and not really caring about the Radiohead version at all, even though Radiohead is a fantastic band. But this is, that was, I just felt like I was transported the entire time I was listening um, on some sort of weird ocean journey. Like, so good. So good. I can't even, I need to organize my thoughts a little bit. Someone else go. Weird Ocean Journey is right. I haven't actually heard the Radiohead version, so I'm coming into this as though it is her song, and it felt like her mm. song. And that's, in my opinion, the best kind of cover, is one where somebody just takes it and digests it into their own thing. I was really surprised by that middle section where everything dropped out, and then suddenly we were just, like, back in it, and it felt like it felt like she escaped. Yeah, what a wild journey. What makes me like really appreciate and enjoy the song a lot is the fact that it really feels like it's her song in a way. I've heard the song countless times because it's off like my favorite Radiohead album. The intro to this cover starts off 100% identical and I didn't know this cover was on the album. So when I listened to the album for the first time and I heard that part, I was like, that sounds like Weird Fishes. And then it immediately like changes the tempo and I was like, oh, maybe it's not Weird Fishes. And then when she starts singing, I was like, oh, it's Weird Fishes. <laughs> so it was like a really fun journey of like, like that expectation and then it dropping out and then coming back. 
I think she did a really remarkable job reimagining this song, and I feel like it really captures like the depths of Leanne's emotions rather than Tom York's. I feel like I can hear her experiences in the song, and most of the time I forget that it's even a cover, and it's cool to hear that you two are also picking up on that. You could have said the depths of the ocean of Leanne's emotions. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I approve. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> the vocal and the way the vocal was recorded really helps with that a lot. I don't hear any auto tune. And so we hear like the full spectrum of her voice. But what I did hear was that there was definitely some doubling. It wasn't really strong doubling, but there was some doubling behind the voice. But that smoky rasp that she has is itself like a different pitch. And so even when there weren't added harmony parts, it almost felt like she was in harmony with herself, with the doubling and with the rasp that she had. And I thought that was a, a really impactful way to deliver the vocal line. Mm -hmm. The vibrato that she has, at least in this song, felt so sorrowful too. Mm -hmm. And that vibrato itself, I think, added some of that feeling of harmony to it. It was like really slow and wide and sort of breathy the way that she went in. I thought that was also a really cool effect, along with the sort of gentle rasp she has. The various colors of her voice are, are just like absolutely gorgeous. And I think this song or this recording is a good representation of kind of how she represents herself musically. She expressed that she was having such a great time arranging the song for a live performance and enjoys playing it live with her band that she wanted to recapture that energy, that same live energy for the rest of the album, you know, as authentic as possible, like no auto tune. It's like it's just the people that are performing. So there's like uh, things that aren't perfectly aligned. Being OK with vulnerability and keeping the mistakes there rather than making everything perfect as possible. I feel like it would have been so different. This experience would have been so different if she didn't make that decision to make it as live as possible. Yeah, I, I definitely hear that. There was obviously a lot of work that went into the production for this. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like an overly polished, overly produced song. Something I noticed was after the instrumentals cut out and we have just that harmony bit, it reminded me a lot of Imogen Heap, but mm -hmm. less clean, I guess. It didn't quite sync. There were bits where like one part would cut out on a, a syllable earlier than others and the vibrato wasn't quite in line and they could have just copy pasted and shifted the pitch if mm -hmm. they wanted to, but they chose not to. And that really enforced the, the live feeling of the song. Exactly. I think the live feeling is what gives it so much emotion though. And Alexis, you were talking about how she felt like this really encapsulated her journey if it were a polished pop song, I don't think we would hear that journey. And I don't think we would hear her own raw emotion and vulnerability come through. So I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. And when I listen to this again, I will need to listen specifically for some of those things that Jesse was able to pick out. When we got to that section where everything dropped out underneath of her... She could have just vocally gone really wild on this. And I think there are some artists out there who would choose to do that. This is their chance to like really dig into some of those vocal chops, but it absolutely would have lost that raw feeling that was there if she had chosen to do a bunch of runs and a bunch of wild things. I think it's really fascinating because she deliberately structured the song order so that it is actually going in chronological order of the events that they, that they happened. So this song, this cover... Uh, like happens like at the middle point. Now that you mention the narrative aspect of the album, I am even more interested in listening to the whole album start to finish because I have a writing background and we learn in like film classes that at some point there is a lowest moment for the protagonist where they have to like dig themselves out of a hole. And it seems like a very logical thing to put sinking to the bottom of the ocean as your lowest moment. I'm so interested to hear what the chain of events is to happen up to this point and then how she recovers and comes out of it. If you are interested to know more about them, check out the other song uh, from this album that I was actually going to make the song for this week, but then I realized it was a covers week. Uh, the song is called Can't Fight from this album. It's part of the beginning part of the arc, the personal arc that she was going through. 
I think it's like a, a very effective and emotionally impactful journey. It is extremely satisfying seeing those events play out and hearing how those events are represented musically in mood, in layer, and emotional intensity. It's just a really, really wonderful thing. So it's, it's definitely worth checking out. Awesome. So good. I am very excited today to bring you a song from maybe my favorite artist of the last 10 years, M&E-K. As in the letters M-N-E-K, which is how he, Uzuechi M-N-E-K, pronounces his last name. He's a complete package songwriter, singer, producer, mixer, who first started making music in his bedroom at the age of nine and got his first record deal at 14. I absolutely love, love, love everything I've ever heard from him. And I have to confess, I wanted to do today's theme just to give me an excuse to bring him in because he's maybe a little more successful than our usual threshold for ours to talk about. He had a hit that went all the way to number 13 on the Billboard Top 100 as a featured artist on Never Forget You by Zara Larson. But while Zara went on to make more Top 100 hits, M&EK hasn't been met with the same level of success, which makes him a bit of a one-hit wonder. And as a fan of his, it feels a little unfair because to me, he was the best aspect of that track. To me, he is also an artist that really defies genre labels. His music falls under the general blankets of EDM and dance pop, but for example, his early work has been called house music, but there are lots of rhythmic things that he does that bring him out of that definition. He's also been called R&B, but he really doesn't fit the established contemporary R&B sound of artists like LMI, Kalani, Daniel Caesar. Which brings up the question, do people label him as R&B just because he's black? Because he uses riffs? People have been using riffs in pop music since the early 90s. That's nothing new. It kind of smacks to me of how in the 1950s black artists were making what we now call rock and roll before white artists were but still got labeled R&B, which didn't sell as well, which is a topic I'd love to do a deep dive into someday, but perhaps I'm digressing too much. The important thing is that m &E makes some amazing music, and I can't wait for you to hear it. Here he is on a cover of Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Let's give it a listen. Tonight, ought to have myself such a good time. I feel alive. And the world is turning inside out You're floating around in ecstasy so Don't stop me now Don't stop me Cause I'm having a good time, having a good time I shouldn't start leaping through the skies Like a tiger defying the laws of gravity Passing by like Lady Godiva I'm gonna go, go, go There's no stopping me I'm burning through the sky 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit I'm traveling at the speed of light I wanna make a supersonic man out of you so. Don't stop me now I'm having such a good time Don't stop me, don't stop me, don't stop me. Have a good time. 
I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. And it's kind of funny because the, the, the theme of the episode is covers, meaning for the most part, um, I would imagine someone would bring a song that we are all familiar with. So I should be expecting to hear a Queen song. And did I get a Queen song? Yes, but I did not imagine that it would sound like this. Uh, so it still like blew my expectation right from the very beginning. Like as soon as I hit play, I was like, oh yeah, we're doing a covers episode. And then the very first notes, I was like, oh wait, I'm hearing something so familiar, but yet so entirely different. And I was just on board from the get go. As the song went on, wow, did we go places. We went to a lot of places. I was entirely ready to listen to this a third time. I was having so much fun that like, I forgot that we were supposed to talk about the song and I was just going to let it repeat again. 90, like, Eight or 99% of what I'm hearing vocally and felt very much m &E k Absolutely just thoroughly enjoyed their take on this song. I'm just magnetically connected to it. Like, I just want to keep going back to it. There's just so much there that just pulls me in. Wow, this was incredible. So you were having a good time, having a good time? Oh. oh. <laughs> having a ball. Oh. Thank you, Jesse. Oh. I was thinking that, and I was just waiting for Alexis to correct himself. Again, I keep failing. <laughs> I'm not even noticing. It's okay. I forgive you. That's what we're here for. This felt like a really great demonstration of m &E k not just as a artist and a musician and a singer, but also his talent for writing and production. This whole track, the only credit on it for production is m &E k I absolutely agree that he deserves more recognition for the work that he's done, the songs that he puts out and that he sings on. But he's also written and has production credits on some really big name songs. Beyonce, Julia Michaels, Little Mix, Becky Hill, Dua Lipa, and K-pop artists Twice, BTS, and NCT Dream. He is out there doing stuff, and I just wish that he were more of a household name for how incredible he is. I loved the choice in this cover remix thing to start and end in a way that felt sort of true to Queen. But then the whole middle felt like a pure MNEK. He even changed up the melody at times, even the core melody, right? Don't stop me now with the harmonies on now. That is not how it is in the Queen song, and that is not a complaint for me. It sounded so cool. What a great modernization of such a classic song. Even when he changed things up, he still has elements that remind you of Queen, like the harmonies, but he changes that up even a little bit. Like he has a call and response section, which is not necessarily in most of the Queen version. I think he layers in more vocals for the harmony than the original Queen version as well. Like it doesn't feel like just a harmony. It feels like a backing chorus. And I think he does use a touch of auto-tune just to clean up his lead vocal because the production is so intense and there's so much going on i think it, it fits for for the style of the song that he's doing you know what? i don't hate auto-tune at all and i think that there is a place for it and in this kind of dance pop sort of track it feels like it's that's where it belongs you don't want to be thinking about any emotion other than just joy and having a ball i don't need all of the rawness mm -hmm. that comes from not using auto-tune yeah agreed I really appreciate you bringing up his production credits because I didn't know that MDK was solely responsible for this cover. And that is incredible because there is so much going on here and I can't imagine what it was to get it all together and sound this tight despite how chaotic a lot of this is. There are like moments where we're getting like this euphoric crescendo and then it kind of ducks out and we get the quiet, almost atmospheric part. And like we get all these different elements like flutes and things and yeah, it's just like this wonderful mix of, of just different styles and it all comes together really wonderfully and to think that all the production came from one person, that's, that's amazing and it, it really makes me want to check out more of his music or see where he lends his creativity to. I want to build that vocabulary of like what his signature style is because this already is like amazing and, and really impressing me.
because if he's lending this kind of vision to other people, I'm really excited to see like how that plays out in other people's music as well. Just speak to that a little bit. He started learning how to mix and produce and edit music when he was nine. So he is now, having done that for basically his entire life, is now kind of a master. You know, it, like, it makes me feel like I'm seeing a master artist at their easel playing with color and shape and design. He's just using all these elements, putting them together in, in this wonderful way that makes something new and different happen. As to his other works, he has quite a bit of range. He has one EP early in his career. He has a more recent album. He has about half his stuff is just singles in between. And there's a huge span of different styles. Like it's all kind of edm -y, kind of dance poppy. But the sounds themselves are super different throughout his entire catalog of his own work. I think that this cover was the one I didn't know that I needed. And I would really love to get a full album of MNEK covers, Queen. <laughs> yes. Just putting that into the universe to manifest it. Another cover that he did that I really wish we could have talked about was him covering Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles, which I think even more than this song shows his production skills. There's some really wild stuff happening but that one only exists on YouTube on some other person's channel because I don't think he managed to secure rights for distribution on that one. Although I read he just made it kind of on the spot for Valentine's Day or something, or like he decided to do it and he just did it and then released it. That's just kind of the artist he is, where he will just do crazy things and make amazing songs. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Today, I bring to you a cover of Justin Bieber's March 2021 hit, Peaches. The first time I heard Justin Bieber's version of this song, as a Bieber purpose era appreciator, but not super into anything else, I may not have listened to the whole thing. It's super catchy and fun, and it just, it just wasn't my jam. But the first time I heard this version by Tyler X. Cordy and Alice Christensen, I was completely hooked. I often forget that this is actually a Bieber song and not a Tyler X. Cordy and Alice Christensen song because I just love their version so, so much. This song really, I think, needs no introduction. It was such a huge hit, but I wanted to share a few fun facts about the artists on this song. Tyler X. Cordy is a rapper and producer who was previously an MC in pop hip-hop group 2AM Club. I haven't dug through his whole catalog, but his more recent releases live in this really lovely, chill world with understated rapping, gentle vocals, and lyrics that tell relatable stories. Alice Christensen is a singer-songwriter based in New York City. She found her start in her career as a cover artist on YouTube and really picked up a following after Ashton Kutcher shared one of her covers on social media in 2015. I'll let her voice in this song speak for itself. This cover of Peaches is produced by Tyler and features vocals by both Tyler and Alice. Let's listen. Texture of your skin. Wanna wrap my arms around you, baby? Never let 
let you go. Oh, and I say, oh, there's nothing like your touch. It's the way you lift me up. And I'll be right here with you till the end. That was super cool. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Kay, that I like this version a lot better. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Justin Bieber version. That's actually one of my favorite songs by him, even though I'm not a general huge fan of him. But this has so much going on. If I didn't know about the Justin Bieber song, I would also think that this was an original by Tyler X. Cordy. It is very, very lo-fi, but there's other elements going on. That octave parallel unison line between the two singers is so gripping, really grabbed my attention. Also, I, I noticed a little bit of that pitched up sort of chipmunky sound at the beginning and the end, which reminded me a lot of Through the Wire by Kanye. All the vocals were super interesting and super different throughout the piece. I feel like this cover just fits more into my energy. I was just immediately swept away by it. The original is a good song, and I don't really have any complaints about it. It's more that this telling of that song in this really just dreamy way, it changes the character of the song. One thing that I picked up on was the vinyl fuzz that was put into the song, and it doesn't start immediately. It starts off like maybe five or so seconds later into the song. I'm really glad that it was more of a delayed thing because it caught my attention and it really changed the listening space of the song. I feel like if it was there from the very beginning, it would feel really jarring. That contrast between like this really dreamy production and this really organic sounding texture with the vinyl fuzzing happening at the same time, it let me feel like I was in this split world in a way. I thought it was like a really subtle choice that made a really big difference in just being wrapped up in this song's dreamy atmosphere. It's a shame that it's only like two and a half minutes because I kind of just wanted to be there longer. But for what it is, I was just like melting. I think dreamy is a really great word for it. And it's definitely in the lo-fi realm, like Jesse, you mentioned. But it feels like it plays with elements from both lo-fi hip hop that you might find on, you know, lo-fi girls YouTube channel and more of the pop track that you find in Peaches, which I think Peaches has a little bit, a little bit of that lo-fi flavor to the original by Bieber. But this really dove deeper. Alexis, you mentioned it being dreamy. When you said that, I was like, oh yeah, it feels like when you are in that state of being half awake and half asleep, and you're aware of the fact that things are happening around you, but you also are halfway in this dream world, it kind of feels like that to me. Like you have these sort of dreamy vocals and this dreamy lo-fi happening. At one point that beat just cuts out for a second, kind of jars you out of it a little bit. It's almost that lo-fi for relaxing and studying, but it grabs your attention way more. Yeah, to me, I feel like the original has a bit of that lo-fi-ness like you mentioned, but the more directness of the original gives me more of a laid back feeling rather than like fully lo-fi but it's exactly how you said on this on this cover it's like you're half awake in a way it's a really nice contrast to experience within a song it was really cool to see it magnify the more chill and lo-fi energy i already know that this song just seems like the perfect song to be at the start of a playlist because it is short and doesn't have this really conclusive journey so I was wondering, like, where does this song fit for you in terms of what brings you to going to it and, and how do you incorporate it in your life? I'm a shuffler, first of all, because I get bored if things are in the same order all the time. But this is a song that I have on a lot of my sort of chill playlists. If things are too calm, I fall asleep. It's a problem. So I have to have something to focus on all the time. I love listening to this like next to a fire pit or something like that where it's sort of winding down. I have a hot drink. It's a little chilly outside. 
But also, it's a never skip for me if it comes on a playlist. It's just too good. It's also only two minutes. And I wanted to mention that I don't know if it was intentional. When it reaches the end, I always want the chorus one more time. It ends us on, I think, what is in the Bieber version of verse, and it starts with the chorus. And so you can almost just loop it indefinitely, and it feels like you have a never-ending version of Tyler X. Cordy and Alice Christensen's Peaches, oh. which is really cool and definitely something I have done before. <laughs> Funny how it all matches up like that. And I think the way it does end with like the pitched vocals is really nice. I really like the way that he pitched those vocals for that part. For some reason, I just absolutely loved like high-pitched vocals or just any kind of vocal manipulation. I feel like there's just a really different kind of emotional quality. As artificial as it sounds, I feel like sometimes I can't connect to something unless it is actually pitched. I feel like it's just another dimension to the emotional possibilities. It really lends itself to being a way to drift the song into its end, but somehow it also connects back to the beginning. I think it really helps bring that sound to an end i think so too and i think it's it's the start of the song too if i'm remembering correctly and it's a good end cap if you want to hear more of their stuff uh, tyler x cordy and alice christensen worked together on another song called cut you down that's cut the letter u down which blends their chill vocals and rapping with sort of a bigger edm influenced sound not this chill lo-fi that you hear We didn't get to talk a lot about Alice's vocals, which is, I think, just a testament to how well they work in this kind of song with her gentle sound that draws you in without becoming the overwhelming focus. I think this was just a great track for her. I also really love Alice Christensen's song from 2018, Easy, which is really a very different sound again. It's a catchy pop song with a darker, glitchier production, just has a really cool contrast with those smooth, gentle vocals of hers. For more Tyler X. Cordy, I just started digging into some of his stuff this week, and I've really liked Ice Cube, which is a solo track from him without a vocalist on it other than himself, and it's a lo-fi pop hip-hop track that he's rapping on, so I definitely recommend checking out Cut You Down by both of them, Easy by Alice Christensen, and Ice Cube by Tyler X. Cordy. All right. I'm really excited because I feel like I got a lot of Alice. And I think that's partly because I already am familiar with Alice and like them as a vocalist and as a musician. But hearing this cover of Peaches, I feel like I'm only getting a glimpse of Tyler. And and it has me really curious to see like what he does on other songs. I don't know how to wrap up this episode. (laughs) We never know how to wrap up the episode. It's No, but we need like at least some sort of outro. <laughs> outro. What if we just say oh, outro a bunch of times until it becomes outro, meaningless? Outro 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 outro, 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 outro. This is this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> you did this, Kay. <laughs> oh, uh, I was thinking what if we had bloopers or like outtakes it kind of feeds into our whole we don't really know what we're doing thing 